Joe Biden isn't letting the moment slip him by. From the aftermath of the Atlantic piece to these Bob Woodward tapes and revelations, Joe Biden channeling the anger many Americans are feeling with just over 50 days to go until Election Day. Joining our conversation, national political reporter for The Washington Post, Robert Costas here, professor of journalism and politics at Morgan State University, and a contributor for The Grio, our friend Jason Johnson's back, and senior opinion writer for The Boston Globe, Kim Atkins is here. Robert Costa, my, my question for you, if you take this period from last Monday, when Joe Biden, coming off the Republican convention, went out there and gave a forceful speech saying that looters and vandals will be prosecuted. You go through the whole week, he gave a COVID speech about the back-to-school openings being contaminated by politics. He jumped on the Jeffrey Goldberg Atlanta piece Thursday night and into Friday morning, and he has seized these Woodward tapes with a... Um, really a rage that I think a lot of people um, feel in hearing this admission, this confession almost from Donald Trump. What do you make of what Joe Biden is making of the gifts Trump seems to be handing him? It's actually a pretty nuanced response from Vice President Biden. I was calling around my Democratic sources this afternoon, Nicole, and they said, yes, Vice President Biden is seizing on these character issues that have been put forward by the Woodward book, issues not only of character, but of leadership when it comes to President Trump. But the, Demo the top, some of my top Democratic sources said, also pay attention to how Biden still gave his speech this week on the economy in Michigan. He's still focusing on the economy because he wants to connect with Americans who put their own financial interests, economic issues, perhaps ahead of character issues, because he doesn't want to get pulled into this riptide of only going along with the latest Trump controversy or scandal. He wants to make sure he has that undercurrent of the economy. You know, it's such an important point, and I think it could get lost on someone that doesn't watch sort of the, the whole of the campaign. But even Senator Kamala Harris, who came out, and I think she was making remarks um, specifically about Trump's trip to Kenosha last week, is making these economic arguments. Every time Joe Biden and Senator Harris open their mouths, Jason Johnson, they are making a point that all this chaos, all this instability, the neglect and the, and the refusal to do something about the pandemic has been the greatest blow to our economic strength. Nicole, and, and it is a brilliant and it is a smart message because remember, the economy is the only polling area where Joe Biden is sometimes losing to Donald Trump. For some reason, people still think that the president is managing the economy in a halfway decent way. But one thing that was really clear to me and what makes this messaging really important, you know what I haven't seen when I've gone around to, to, to Target or Walmart and other places? There's no back to school sales. There's, there's, there's no lunches being bought. Like, because yeah. of this pandemic and kids having to be home, people aren't spending money, which is slowing down the economy, which is having an impact on everybody else. There are no back-to-school jobs. My students that I taught virtually this morning are like, yeah, we, there's no job at Chipotle right now. There's no way for us to work and help tuition. So by Biden and Harris mm. focusing on the economy, they're reminding people that there's an actual competence element to this above and beyond the tragedy of just COVID. Well, and, and Kim, if you pull the thread, and, and again, we have, I think, four minutes from 18 separate interviews with Woodward, but if you pull the thread on what Trump has already sort of confessed to, it's that he knew the virus was airborne, he knew the virus was lethal, and he knowingly downplayed it. There's the, the, the sort of character atrocity there that he left people at risk health-wise, but there's the economic negligence that there are a whole lot of people whose businesses maybe survived the first shutdowns, but they're not going to survive the slowdowns that are ensuing right. from just our, our lingering, lagging inability to extinguish the virus the way every other Western country has. That's absolutely right. I mean, it seems that the president insists on this false narrative that fighting the virus was a choice between mm -hmm. protecting the economy uh, or being prudent when it came to uh, distancing and, and shutdowns that were aimed to stop the spread of the virus, that you had to pick one or the other, when what 
the competent way forward and what we've seen countless other countries do is stop the spread of the virus so that you do protect the economy. He never did that first part of it. And so we're seeing the economy uh, continue to suffer for, you know, now we're more than six months into this pandemic uh, and there's no end to that in sight. There was not uh, an effort to eradicate it uh, you know, flatten the curve, uh, remember that phrase, so that uh, hospitals wouldn't be overwhelmed, <laughs> so that the virus would get under control and businesses could start to reopen. You see that happen in pockets of the United States, but not in big, wide uh, swaths. Here in Washington, D.C., uh, we're sort of stuck in this plateau limbo where businesses can't fully reopen because you, we can't get that number of new uh, diagnoses, uh, new coronavirus cases down low enough uh, to fully reopen. And that's happening in so many places in the country. Country. So, you know, as, as our board stated in our editorial today, it's a matter of sheer incompetence on the president's part. Robert, Jason, and Kim are all staying put. When we come back, as the NFL season gets ready to kick off, 